Aha! Something different today. Uh, I wanted to go over this new loader that I have. Even though this is new to me, this whole unit is actually about 14 years old. Uh, a lot of people uh, who follow the show know I've been using this recently and I did an unboxing video of it uh, and I actually won it on eBay. Now other folks are asking me right off the bat because a company called RC Four Wheel Drive is coming out with one of these why I didn't go with an RC Four Wheel Drive one. Uh, and simply put, I wanted to try some German engineering. I've always wanted to try out uh, uh, the, the Groppner loader itself uh, and, and as well it's a limited edition right and it's, so for its age it's been very well taken care of and a lot of people want to know about um, the hydraulics how do the hydraulics actually work now I act, when I got this this whole cab was velcroed on underneath but I found for our purposes of filming it works a lot better if I just had it screwed into place. Now this here, uh, just a simple, um, you know, shroud, nothing too crazy. Uh, it is made of metal and plastic. Now that's out of the way. Here you can actually see the hydraulics and how they're exposed. Let me move this camera in a little bit. You'll see that what you're looking at is one, two, three servos that control a block. A lot of people have been asking me, how does a hydraulic system work? Are, you know, is it actually fluid that's going through? Is there a pump? And the answer is yes. Now I actually use, uh, just because this is what I have, a Spectrum uh, DX18, okay? Uh, it's a dual stick controller, short antenna, you know, not flexible. I, I love the fact that it's, it's not going to break easily. And I've basically set this up uh, to be, even though it shows an airplane, to work with this whole system. Now here, let me sit down. Here's the battery for it, okay? Just adjusting my viewfinder. I know, look at that, old nickel metal hydride battery. One of the originals, that, you know, this is what it came with. 3600. Well, this isn't what the original loader came with. This is an upgraded battery. The guy I got this from actually did some sort of customization to where he could slide in a larger battery. And being this, I have not switched it over to uh, um, a LiPo just because I don't need to. This battery is very adequate for me. And in fact, you guys don't know that have been following the show that I switched everything over. Um, it's a Tekken FXR ESC in there that controls the whole speed of the vehicle. And it's uh, actually an inline castle BEC uh, that is uh, BEC slash ESC speed control that's controlling the pump, all powered through my DX18. Now, did I have to go with a DX18, like all 18 channels? The answer is definitely not. Um, but I certainly had enough channels that it made it worthwhile for me to do it. Uh, that old AM radio that it came with, pardon me, FM radio, it was a Futaba, I believe, uh, just was archaic. So I needed to switch all this out. Plus I switched out this servo and this servo for the E-Flights. This uh, original servo is doing just fine. It's a Groppner servo. Now, here's the pump. This is the tank in here. Sorry, I know that's a lot of information, guys. Everyone was asking me over the last little while about the battery and, and the radio and all the electronics. So that's what I've done. Now, this is the tank. It comes out of the tank into the hydraulic block. Now, a block is basically a valve system. Here, I'll move this camera. You get in nice and close. This valve system uh, moves back and forth and opens and closes. Now the valve systems are basically hooked up to the hydraulic rams right here, okay? This ram uh, controls the bucket, how it goes up and down. We also have a ram right in there. I don't know if you can see it yet, right there. Uh, that actually moves the, the, the loader back and forth. Now, and of course, we have a, a ram that goes up and down. Let me see if I can get the battery in so you guys can see it. Is that a good angle? Okay, so I'll flip it on its side so you can see underneath. 
There is no suspension that goes with the loader. It just works on an axis point. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Well, here, I'll try to zoom in with this camera. Sorry, a little shake. Whoa. <laughs> okay, the axis point you can see right here on the inside, and it just basically, it's a rocker, right? No suspension at all. Drive shafts goes to a transmission, drive shaft out to the front. Yes, it is four wheel drive. I do not have the axles locked. I'm gonna look at doing that. But you can see underneath all of the hydraulic lines that are going feeding the pistons. Now the Groppner name uh, back when they were releasing this was certainly synonymous with quality. And that is one of the reasons why I went with it. Now, here's the modification that the fella did. Uh, actually, I'm going to load it in this way. I changed it over to Dean's plugs or, or uh, these quick connect plugs simply because it had the old Tamiya uh, or Tamiya or Tamiya or <laughs> wherever you guys are, however you pronounce it in the part of the world you're in. Uh, it had those plugs in there. I wanted to get rid of them only because it didn't fit with my uh, battery charger anymore. Plus, you know, you get a better current flow. There we go. So I'll turn on my radio. It's already on. <laughs> I'll turn it on. It's already on. Uh, and plug it in. Here we go. There it is. Uh, ESC. Now these I have to figure out. These are very old. Uh, these these lids. And in here these screws have cracked over the years. Just because it got like the not the screws have cracked, but the the molding around there. Because this outside's not metal. So I just have to figure out like Velcro or magnet system that can hold that in there nice and tight. Now, here, let me zoom out with the other camera. Wow. You can see I have a crock, crock pot right there. This is ribs for tonight. Yes. <laughs> Dinner in the background, RC, ribs and RC, great. <laughs> this cab, you cannot open. I'm sure you can modify it, add lights. I've seen like model crayon and, and uh, a, a bunch of my other friends that are out there. You can see a little piece here that I have broken off, unfortunately. This old plastic, hey, it's just so brittle. You can see it's been snapped off in other areas. That's okay, that's not a big deal. This is when it actually fell um, during the last filming. So I'll probably take this off and make some sort of metal surround up there, right? This whole cab needs to be replaced. You hear that? It's just kind of cheap Lexan that's in there, but no big deal, it's on the front. This one's hard plastic, but the front is not. Okay, so let's uh, fire this up so you guys can see what I'm even talking about. Uh, everything is turned on basically, and you can see when I'm moving, here we go. This is for the bucket to move up and down, that it's moving the valve block there. Now, with the help of like digging with Martin and a few of my other friends, Tobias, uh, Breaker, uh, and Model Cran, all those guys have helped me, you know, try to set limits on, and the speed of my servo to help the, the hydraulic flow. Because it was pretty severe before. If the block opens up too much, well, then you get too much flow and, and it moves very, very erratically. Here we go. Yeah, I don't want to move back and forth. Well, if I move backwards there, yeah. Come back, move it forward, careful, end of the table. <laughs> and of course, back to the middle. And for left and right, pardon me, left and right, yep, there we go. And the arm up and down. Now you can arrange this to be any way you want. If you're like a full scale operator and you want to like change the servos around to be totally in, in the way you operate it, you can do that. I'm not a full scale operator, so I just kind of hooked it up the way it works for me. I'm going to turn on the pump. This is why I needed two ESCs in there, one for forward and backward, and then one for the pump that controls that. Here's the pump. There we go. It's on a variable speed. Now you guys can say, oh my god, it's so loud, right? Why is it so loud? But it's actually very quiet for a hydraulic pump, especially when the shroud is on. This is a motor that spins a pump on the inside that pumps fluid out and of course into the block that controls the hydraulics. So variable speed means variable strength. Okay, you can see the fluid here. Well, it's kind of clear, so there we go. Now that it's turned up, 
I'll raise the arm. Okay, so I have it set up. I know it's probably backwards, but when I push up, it goes up. Okay, now if I want more strength, I'll change the bucket. If I wanted more strength, I could turn it up. And I could turn it up quite high, but I don't need to, right? Because I'm not lifting anything right now. But if I was, you could certainly have it. And I could do channel mixing. I haven't done it yet. I haven't figured it out because I'm still very new to this. You know, channel mixing so you pump variable speed when things are moving, but I'm still new to it. Here we go. Go down. So everything's being pumped to the, to the um, pistons. And of course, left and right controls the bucket. Yeah. Now I know a lot of you are like, oh, I hate the noise, it's annoying. But dang, when you're outside, it is awesome when you're moving. Well, snow for me right now. I'm looking forward to uh, going and doing some rocks or some dirt or something like that. Here, let's see left and right. Turn on the pump. Okay, now I have played with the speed of the pump. Oops. It takes the mess. These things are a lot harder to operate. You know, you need a lot of practice. Woo! Oops. You always have to have your head wrapped around the fact that you're in the cab and that this, just like when you're flying, right? You can see my kid's, kid's bumble chair, his high chair, learn how to sit chair <laughs> down on the side there. Back, back, I, this guy in here needs a bumble chair just for his back, right? No suspension. <laughs> I know it sounds loud, but my friends, you know, it's worth the power, man. Okay, finesse. Nope. So I gotta turn it down on the other side. Or just learn how to use the controller. <laughs> there we go, like that. It's all how you move the sticks. Anyway, so there you go. That's how the loader works, guys. Uh, you can hear it chirping away, digital servos. I could turn it off, but instead what I did was always made it turned on. Uh, so if I ever wanted to just have it turned off, I would do this, yeah? Pretty straightforward and simple. Battery encas encasement. Ugh. Wow. That thing is unusually heavy. <laughs> okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed the look at the loader. Thanks for watching as always. See you next time.